So number one is an example of what you'll have on numbers one through four. Name the set or sets to which each of these belong. So um, your answer key will be the little shorthand where it actually tells you um, the like I, Z, whatever. So if you don't want to memorize the little letters that represent it, you can just list the actual number sets. So what's the first number set that allows fractions? First number set that allows fractions here. Yeah, rational, I heard rational somewhere. So this is rational, all right? And then um, that's represented, by the way, by Q on your sheet, if you see a Q. If it is rational, that means it's also what? What's the other set that it is if it's rational? What are all of them? Yes, real. So you would list rational, and you can say rational, by the way, if you don't, don't know that Q is rational. Rational, real, all right? So you want the lowest set it'll belong to and everything after that, right? So if it, was, if it was natural numbers, you would say natural, whole, integer, rational, real. It would be all of those, okay? The next two are just like <clears throat> numbers five through 12 on your review sheet. So this one was like numbers one through four. These are like numbers five through 12 on your review sheet. This is just evaluating, which means plug it in and use order of operations. They tell me that X is two and Z is six. Honestly, the biggest problem I have here is people like not adding one in. Like there's a, like on the last one, there's a plus X on the back and they forgot to put it in there. So just pay attention that you write the entire thing. So Z times the quantity five plus X, we would say six times the quantity five plus two. And just do order of operations, very simply. I'm gonna do the five plus two first, and then I'm gonna multiply. So five plus two is six times seven is, there we go. And then the dreaded fraction ones, exactly the same, Y cubed plus X. Y here is two, so I would say two cubed plus X. I'm gonna do my exponent first, eight plus two fifths, right? I mean, you can say eight and two fifths, you can get a common denominator. Either way, you're gonna get 42 fifths or eight and two fifths, same thing. So plug it in, use order of operations. All right, so numbers 13 through 20 is what these represent. The first type is just uh, a basic equation. You wanna get your variables to one side, your numbers to the other. So I'm gonna subtract my n over. On the left, the n's cancel. Don't forget that is a negative seven when you bring that down. Four n minus one n is three n, and then we have plus 11. Then you want to subtract your 11 over. So we have negative seven minus 11 is negative 18. And our last step here is to divide by three. So we get n equals negative six. You can check these by plugging them in. You can check them by plugging them in. All right. All right, the next kind that we have includes distribution. So very simply, when you have parentheses, you have to distribute first to get out of those parentheses. So I'm gonna distribute my six first here. On the right, left-hand side, nothing happens right now. Six times four and six times five R. On the right-hand side, I do wanna continue on and combine my like terms. I have a 24 and a seven. So this will give me 31 plus 30 R. All right, move my numbers to one side, variables to the other. Those cancel, I get 31 equals 31 plus 35 R. People always question when they get zero as an answer, but zero is an actual number. So if you get something like this, you're just not done solving. Zero is a number, it's a whole number. R equals zero. Okay. 
So I just wanted to do one of these. It's similar to the other one. It's just you have distribution on both sides. Just so you could see the examples of both. So for this one, you just want to distribute before you do anything. The distribution does not affect this negative 4x. So you just leave that alone. On the right-hand side, you do want to combine your like terms. So I have negative 4x and negative 8x. So I have 12 minus 12x there. So distribute first, combine any like terms, variables on one side, numbers on the other, divide. Pretty straightforward. Solve for the indicated variable. So each one of these will tell you what variable you're solving for. In this case, they want us to solve for x. So we want to get everything with an x to one side, everything without an x to the other. We want to use distribution to factor it out, and then we want to divide. That's the basic process for something like this. All right? So for this one, I would subtract that cx over yx minus cx. I'm going to factor out my x. And then I am going to divide by that whole group. So x is going to equal g over y minus c. All right. 